Legereus Sneed has been traded to the Tennessee Titans for a third round pick in 2025 and a seventh round pick in this year's draft. We appreciate you watching here on the breaking news edition of the Kansas City Chiefs Support. And I'm telling you, you're not going to find better breaking news places than right here for the Kansas City Chiefs. So if it's your first time, if you're just joining us, hit that subscribe button because we're about to break this down in full detail. I'm going to give you why this is good for the Chiefs, why this could be bad for the Chiefs, if they got a good deal with Legere Sneed, all everything coming to you. And I got to be completely honest, I've been feeling like crap all day, but guess what? I don't care. We're getting breaking news videos out to you. I don't care if I'm in my car. I don't care if I'm sick. I don't care if I'm in a plane. It doesn't matter. I'm going to make sure that y'all are covered. So you're not going to find better breaking news outlets for Kansas City Chiefs than right here. All right, let's start to break this down. Like I mentioned, the Chiefs in return for Legereus Need got a third round pick in 2025 and then a seventh round pick in this year's draft. This was about the value we expected. If you've been a loyal viewer, you've seen some of our videos here. Guess what? This was really the trade that I proposed to Tennessee because Tennessee and Kansas City have been talking with Legereus Sneed back and forth for around a week and a half now. And this trade was almost expected to some extent. The thing that I proposed for this trade was a third round pick and a sixth round pick in exchange for Legereus Sneed. Obviously, the Titans do not have a third round pick this year. That's why that third round pick came in 2025. Uh, pretty much hit it on the nose. So another reason to subscribe because we're putting out informative content and basically hit this trade on the nose two days ago. So, hey, another reason. But I like this move a lot because it does free up $19.8 million in cap space. And I think the reason this is happening, I know there's many people in the comments that say they don't like this. And I truly understand that. And I really do wish that Legereus Sneed could have stayed, stayed with Kansas City. The thing was, it didn't make sense. There was two options when it came to luxurious need and the way that Chiefs used him. The first option, which is what they were kind of expecting to do, was to have him play on the franchise tag in 2024. And then next year, he was going to be a free agent. The franchise tag would go up. He would probably be an unrestricted free agent. And boom, he would probably go to a different team because the Chiefs just couldn't pay what he is worth. The other option was this, getting something of value in return for him. And when you have a top cornerback in the National Football League, I really do feel like you got to get something out of that. Now, a third round pick in 2025 and a seventh round pick isn't some amazing value. I think the Chiefs and I myself were expecting and hoping for at least a second round pick or something of that worth. Do I think that the third round pick and the seventh round pick is worth a second round pick? Probably not. I would say third and fifth, maybe pushing it, maybe third and sixth would be really on the edge. But at the same time, you're getting value. Now, Legereus Sneed had a great season, and I think he is a very, very big reason why the Chiefs were back in the Super Bowl and won the Super Bowl. But I will stop myself and say, I truly do feel like Trent McDuffie is the better talent in the cornerback position for Kansas City. He still has two more years left on his rookie deal, and the Chiefs could extend him after that because at that point, there's probably going to be enough cap space from Patrick Mahomes' contract increasing in the next two years probably move some money around there. And then Chris Jones, you can move some money around with that to extend Trent McDuffie. Trent McDuffie is younger, first of all. Legereus Sneed did have issues with his knee and there was some other concerns. He's 27 years old. I think McDuffie was just the better option in this entire facet. But I understand you're probably frustrated in some ways. I know that we all love Legereus Sneed and we're thankful for what he did for the Chiefs for the past four years. But I do have to ask you, what is your one word reaction? to the Kansas City Chiefs sending Legereus Sneed to the Tennessee Titans in exchange for a 2025 third round pick and then this year's seventh round, a seventh round pick. So let me know in the comment section down below, one word reaction, I'll give you mine in just a moment. I'm gonna say expect it because my thought process is this. You have a top cornerback in the NFL. Yes, you want to keep him on your squad. Yes, you would like to have him when going for a three-peat in terms of being the first team ever to win back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back Super Bowls. But you have to understand that if they were to let him play on the franchise tag this year, he would then probably walk in 2024. And so the guy that you could have gotten value at, you would have let walk for nothing. Now you get a third round pick in 2025, which I think is a very valuable asset to have, an extra seventh round pick to add to your draft stock this year, 
I think this was just the right move for Brett Veach, as much as it does stink. And I've said this for a month now. Chris Jones was the more important piece. They locked him down. As much as I would love to have Legere Steen, it seemed like they were going to do that. I don't think that it logistically made sense. Now, what exactly does this mean for the Chiefs cornerback room going forward? Well, Trent McDuffie does become cornerback number one. That should be the first thing that we should start with, and I don't think we should have a problem with that. He was the highest-rated PFF cornerback in all of the NFL for the first seven weeks of this past season, and he finished top five in the NFL in terms of PFF-ranked cornerbacks out of over 70 other cornerbacks. This guy is legit. If you remember the Super Bowl, he was locking down Debo Samuel like it was nothing. Now, does Legereus need play a part in that? 100%. So who's in the back burner? Does the draft strategy change? What is going to happen with Kansas City? Well, guess what? I truly do feel like they may go quarterback in round one. And this Rake Straw Jr. is a pretty good option. I could see if a Nate Wiggins falls, a Kool-Aid McKinstry falls. Or, and this is something that I've done on my mock draft before. So if you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button because, because we're predicting this stuff. You trade your 64th overall second round pick. You trade your 32nd overall first round pick, and then you move up in the first round. Because with the signing of Marquise Brown, what do you need on your team besides maybe an extra wide receiver? And by the way, this is one of the deepest wide receiver draft classes we've seen in decades, in my opinion. If you trade up your second round pick, your first round pick to say pick 22, I bet you a Nate Wiggins is there. I bet you a Cooper DeGene is there. I bet you a Kool-Aid McKinstry is there. Would you like to see one of those guys on the Kansas City Chiefs to pair with Trent McDuffie? Or do you trust Josh Williams, Jalen Watson, who were both fantastic this past year and the times that they were needed? I truly do feel like the Chiefs are comfortable with them on the field. I don't think they would have made this move if they weren't comfortable with them on the field. So here's your next question. What do you think the Chiefs will do? Are they going to draft a cornerback in round one of the NFL draft? Type Y for yes if you think they're going to. Type N for no. This can also be your opinion. If you want them to, type Y for yes. If you don't want them to, type N for no. Let me know down in the comment section down below. If you're asking me this question, I'm probably going to say you trade your third round pick from this year and your first round pick to move up in the first round. Now, I don't know how far that gets you, and I think this also depends on how the draft ends up going. But at the same time, you still have that second round pick for a wide receiver, for a Brendan Rice, for a Tez Walker, who are both, in my book, fantastic wide receivers to have in the second round. And in a lot of years, they are probably upper echelon second round wide receivers. This year, they are bottom tier second round wide receivers. So I think you're getting really good value with them. The other thing that could be a possibility, $19.8 million was freed up for the Kansas City Chiefs. There are guys like Xavion Howard that is still a free agent. Why not go out and sign him? Xavier Howard would be a great addition to the Chiefs. He's a veteran presence to help out, help out with Trent McDuffie, who I'm not saying needs the help, but it would be nice to kind of have that to bounce off of. And Xavier, in my mind, was one of the better cornerbacks in the NFL four years ago. In fact, probably was the best cornerback in the NFL alongside Jalen Ramsey. I think it'd be a good addition. You have the money to spend now. I mean, this is kind of an interesting situation. You've just won two Super Bowls in a row. Your entire team is basically back. Yes, you do lose a key piece in Legere Sneed, but you have over $25 million in cap space to spend with a couple of really good free agents out there that you could potentially bring in to help out either your quarterback slot. Um, obviously, the wide receiver has kind of gotten a little thin. Josh Reynolds is one. Michael Gallup, who was recently released by the, uh, the Dallas Cowboys, could also be an option. In my mind, though, I think what you do is you is you sign Xavier Howard, and then in the draft, you keep your first round pick. You then draft a wide receiver there, and then your second round pick is a cornerback because I still think there's probably pretty good value in that. And you sign the Xavier Howard deal to a one-year thing. Uh, you get a defensive lineman in the third round. Again, we'll have full mock drafts kind of breaking this all down and what exactly to expect post Legereus Sneed, but I truly do feel like this is something to – monitor because the Chiefs have money after winning back-to-back -back Super Bowls and only about $8 million of their, I'd say $28 million-ish, maybe even closer to 30 to spend on the draft process. So $8 million allocated to the draft. You've got $20 million, give or take a few.
that's enough to sign an Xavier Howard with $10 million to spare. That's just my opinion, but hey, we're going to keep breaking down the news for you. We're going to get you everything you need for the latest rumors, news, whatever you want. We got you covered right here on the Chiefs Report. So hit that subscribe button because guess what? We've got more videos coming to you as we continue into this free agency. And now with Legereus Need, change the draft strategy, changes a lot of stuff. So we're going to have to update our free agent targets. We're going to have to update our draft strategy. We're going to have to upgrade a lot of different things because this completely changes the landscape of everything. But I do appreciate y'all watching. And man, Chiefs Kingdom, an extra $28 million doesn't sound too bad to have. But I really do want to say a quick thank you to Legereus Need. Was a great guy in Kansas City. Was a true, true talent. And I expect big from thing, big things from him in Tennessee. But that's all I got for you. Again, if you made it to the end of the video, I really do appreciate you. I know we're not in the lights, the studios, all that stuff. But hey, we're talking football. I'm right here with you. And I cannot tell you how much I enjoy it. So for now, Chiefs Kingdom, we really appreciate it. Peace out.